and gentlemen, I'm James Daniel Compton. This is Robbie Drain, Chance Rayfield, and Chris Stafford. And we took a peanut combine from the early 80s and we're putting it in the 21st century. We're putting a, well we did put a uh, programmable logic controller on it and this is how we did it. All right, so this project is a continuation. Uh, the first sampling system used a sack. You literally came here and built up the sack, and they concluded that operation was a little dirty, so they came up with a second. In last year's capstone project, they came up with another method. And this whole system up here was actually rotated 180 degrees. You had, it at, you had a carousel system. The ore chopper and this secondary hopper were the same, and it also used the linear actuator. And what it would do is it would come out and drop it in a carousel and turn around, which that system had uh, disadvantages too. Uh, as often, it often got stuck, needed a secondary person on it to, uh, to correct things that went wrong with it. So the objective of our project was to come up with an idea that eliminated the need for that second person, something to make the system safer. And what we came up with was to rotate it 180 degrees, uh, put this uh, chute on it, make a rotating uh, table, well not rotating, but linear table, and eliminate that need for that person and also need uh, make collecting the samples much easier. Also, uh, the pass control circuit you took 460, you've seen it before. Uh, it's hard, uh, hard timers that you literally dial, put a piece of tape over, and that's how it stayed time. Uh, that, that, that way, you know, if the timer got messed up or something, it would totally fail the system. So now we have PLC. Nobody's going to touch it. It's programmed in there. If you need changes, hook it up to your computer, change it, and change the system. Here's a picture of the whole system here. You can see the carousel and the person actually on top of the uh, hopper sampling system on the back of the harvester. Now the hazard would be they're sitting in a chair that's not strapped to the system. They're also what five ten feet six feet five or six feet above the ground. So at any time they could take their noggin and just land it on the ground and it probably wouldn't be too soft. This is a picture of where they had the paper sacks. They're inside these boxes. What, these boxes came from the old system. They put the sacks in there and the purpose of the other person was to make sure the sacks were good. We also are trying to eliminate that person because we want it to be one person operating the show instead of multiple people operating the show. Now they're going to talk to you about some of the fabrication. Chair, here we got this tray here. <laughs> it's uh, practically the same tray that's in there. Another tray. It's got a little bit heavier sheet gauge, sheet metal on it. It's 18 gauge. This is 22. Um, we just increased the volume of that sampling hopper. Dr. Mumford wanted uh, approximately 20% more uh, weight in grams, so uh, we increased it the whole 1,200 grams of peanut per sample. And uh, we did that by just by simply keeping the same dimensions and increasing height on that uh, tray up there. It's connected linear actuator, as Chris said. The linear actuator was on the other side. We pulled the tray out and dumped into the carousel. We reused the linear actuator in this bracket. It was just pulled off from the other side and mounted the uh, same way they had it on the 180 degrees on the other side of that. Damper. Uh, Dr. Muffin had it also had an issue with a kink point here where the peanuts would fall from the uh, the way basket. They fall in there and, and I guess they weren't going into the uh, main hopper correctly. So I put an adjustable jamper damper in there and it adjusts approximately six inches up and down just so uh, the peanuts wouldn't get the pink points. It was about four inches in there when it was originally in there. I made it where you it up about six inches. Fabricated this table and uh, run by the same electric motor that ran the carousel right here coming off this bracket. Two, two pill blocks to change revenue to see. Um, you might notice that it's 
on an incline. We took the line of horizon from the uh, center of the axle on the combine and put it on this angle so when it's going through the field, the table's actually sitting straight. He's, on each end of the table, there's these limit switches. If, it, if the table hits these limit switch, the table's going to advance back the other way. These are only, in emer only for uh, use in an emergency. And over here, between the combine and the table, you've got a limit switch that uh, can count how many boxes the uh, table is advancing, and uh, it can tell if it needs to go back and forth. You'll notice if the operator down here on the ground going through the field and needs to toggle the table back and forth, this, this button right here will toggle it either way. Let's see that, Robbie. Wonderful day for showing stuff. Now why do we have those brushes on there? We put the brushes on there so they keep the peanuts from falling out through this gap right here. And these these are the actual sizes of the samples that they're going to get. There's 120 grams, I believe. There's also brushes mounted inside that hover around the sample tray just to keep the peanuts from you falling can, out. We got a picture of the inside of the uh, sample tray right, right there. See the brushes. All, all the way around the tray. Also for the electrical circuit, uh, what it really consists of, we have two double pole, double throw relays. Uh, so you're having six outputs on your PLC, which you only have uh, four motors. But uh, our biggest problem was to change the polarity on the motors because with DC power, you can only go one way. So to reverse that polarity, switch the direction of the motor and make the tray go both ways, uh, we had to put another output on it. And how that works is you energize the output, switches the way the current rolls, and you get another direction. Uh, these right here are just power bars. Everything's contained in here. All that the tractor really needs are powered cables to run to the tractor so you can power the system. So it's easy and convenient Although it looks like a lot of wires, uh, the ones you really have to deal with are very minimal. Here's a picture of the old system here. This is what gave us the idea to do this whole project. We have a bunch of timers, two buses for hot and negative, and the relays. We actually reuse these relays in series with our uh, motors we're using now. We're just using those relays as outputs through our PLC. This is what it looks like now as you can, as he's taping up there. We just got two relays, two bus bars, and there's uh, quite l less wires in there as it used to be. This is a picture of the program from the laptop view. For here, we replaced those timers that we saw in the box before. I just click right here and put it down here and I saved $15. So 15, 30, 45, I saved a lot of money just by clicking and dragging instead of buying another relay and putting it in a box. Those relays that are looks all, like 100, that. 115 each. 115? Yeah, you saved a lot more than you thought. I was doing it exponentially. <laughs> so I go from this, I download the program to my PLC which will be sitting inside the tractor. And that's all the operator sees. So the program's already done. He doesn't have to do anything, but if he needs to change times, he can use this interface and change what time the Relays are going open and closed, the time that the motors run and things of that nature to make the system the way they need it in the field. And this is the 
wire diagram right here. Uh, we promised that we were going to write a uh, manual on it, but once we uh, thought about it, there's not really a manual to write other than just the button. So if there was ever a problem with it, uh, we, had, we were giving them a limit, the diagram, and this will allow them to go through, assess what's happened, and read what's happened and fix the problem. Let's run the system. Yeah, we're not, we're not actually turning the blower on. You know, because we've, we've got dry peanuts, and last, last night when we ran it, dry peanuts are locked on. Okay. Alright, so what's going to happen is it's going to open the doors, drop in, set more hits, clear extra comes out, drops in, and down the chute, into the box, box to move. For the safety of anybody, if any, if y'all have sunglasses, please put them on.